guys and welcome uh, to another modeling video from the Flying Dutchman. This is Frans speaking. Um, today I'm going to show you uh, in this video how to make metal plates out of plastic cards. Um, these are the ones I've made uh, yesterday. Uh, they are plants in front of uh, the German factory uh, where the Tiger 1 is uh, standing in front of. Um, I've already explained it uh, on Facebook, on the, uh, not on the forum I believe. Um, but uh, a lot of guys uh, ask me uh, how I did it. So I'm going to make a little video uh, from it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit further so you can see nope, the other way around. So you can see uh, how they came out. I hope the camera will pick it up a little bit because the metal is a bit shiny now. Uh, um, the top plate I've uh, I've been cutting out a little piece uh, for uh, more re uh, realistic. Uh, the only thing I need to do now is to add some uh, chalk marks, some letters and lines and uh, whatever, and then it's uh, finished. As you can see here, it's just white metal uh, metal plate. No, <laughs> it's a uh, plastic card. I'm sorry. It's uh, the kind of uh, any any kind of uh, plastic card. I've used uh, this one. Uh, I took it uh, from my work. We got uh, loads and loads of them. Uh, don't worry. I asked my boss uh, if I could uh, take uh, some uh, of this plastic card for. Uh, yeah, I'm Dutch. It's free, so just take it. So I'm going to uh, prepare uh, something now. So I will uh, see you uh, on the other side. Okay, so the plastic card you can cut in uh, every desired uh, shape you uh, want. So I've just uh, cut out some uh, some pieces, whatever. Um, I am going to stick them down onto another piece of plastic card, and I'm using we call it. Uh, Pret Buddy, I think it's called White Tech or Blue Tech. I'm sticking it on. This other piece of plastic card, as I said, for me it's free, so it's uh, no waste at all. But it's going to show a little bit better what I'm doing here, I hope. So you can um, you can stick uh, those uh, pieces uh, onto almost uh, everything uh, you want, piece of cardboard, or whatever. So the, th the first thing we do is uh, going to prime it all, and I'm going to use uh, a black surface primer from Vallejo. So here we go. So there you go. Now this needs to be uh, dry. So I'm uh, going to let it uh, dry and uh, clean my uh, airbrush. Uh, run, uh, run some uh, cleaner uh, through it, that's all. So uh, let's just wait until this is uh, dry and then it's uh, time for step two. Right, with uh, the primer all dried up, uh, it's time to uh, do step two. Um, I'm going to use uh, some hull red from uh, Vallejo also. So let's spray that on.
I'm not spraying uh, too thick uh, layers. There's no need to uh, absolutely 100% uh, cover it all. Uh, the black uh, primer can shine through, that's no problem at all. It uh, adds uh, somewhat more re realism. I uh, hope you can see it on camera though, because uh, the light sucks a little bit here. Oh well. That's uh, step number two, the whole red. Um, that has to dry now also. And then it's uh, time for step number three, so I will see you at step three. Right, now that's uh, all dried up. Um, I am going to use Warren Effects from AK. That's uh, this stuff. Um, I'm going to uh, spray it over the whole red. So I'm putting a little bit in my airbrush. I'm using my old airbrush for this. Uh, I'm not using my uh, Infinity for it. But I'm just going to use my old Iwata. Or I water, whatever. Now I'm going to turn on my spraying booth for the first time now. Because this, uh, this stuff is uh, really running. So that's about it. Just a small layer, it uh, doesn't matter if you have uh, a little bit too much on uh, the edges or whatever. Because I'm using an old brush to do some, uh, some kind of streaking. Because if you have metal plates you will see that they have these stripes. Don't ask me why. Now while this is uh, drying I'm going to clean out my airbrush again and then we are going over to step number four. Okay guys, um, I've uh, I zoomed in the camera a little bit further so it's better to see I think. Um, the worn effects uh, that I have uh, sprayed on is uh, dry now. Um, you can also use uh, just a hairspray, the, so sort of uh, say uh, the hairspray technique. Um, it's now ready uh, to receive the base color. Um, you can use any dark grey for it. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this one. It's uh, from uh, Panzer Aces Vallejo, it's a uh, dark rubber and for me that's uh, the best color to use I think, but that's my opinion. So you can use any kind of grey you want. Now I have to dilute it a little bit, this paint, because this is just model color, so it's not for uh, the airbrush. And I'm not going to show you what thinner I am using <laughs> because uh, I really want uh, to try uh, the UMP the Ultimated Products uh, uh, thinner for it but I have to wait uh, until next month uh, to place an order so this is what I'm using now so it's now ready for the base color Just enough. So um, the next step is uh, to let uh, let it all dry again, 
and uh, when it's dry I'm going to chip it uh, with, a, with a damp brush and I will see you uh, on the other sides. Right guys, um, so the base color is uh, pretty much dry now so I can uh, start uh, chipping. I'm just uh, using a, a regular uh, uh, brush for it uh, and some water. And now it's time to chip. I hope you can see it a little bit. And I hope it will work. I'm not worried about uh, chipping too much or too little. It's just... Uh, well, you have to be happy with it uh, yourself, uh, so to speak. I'm using somewhat more water than just a damp brush. For I think a damp brush is uh, it takes a little bit uh, too long before the chips will come off. And to see some results. We'll just take a piece of kitchen towel and damp the water off a little bit. Now this is uh, a little bit difficult for me now because when I'm doing tutorials it's uh, almost like I'm uh, in a hurry so I'm not really comfortable about modeling on camera although I know that uh, nobody is uh, watching while I'm taping it but that's that's just the way I am not like I'm camera shy or something. Maybe I am. I have to say I am not really happy with the outcome of the right one but that is why we have made more and now my hand is in front of the camera so that's also not very handy for you guys to see I think this one is going better than the first one I'm going to use the first one I just did as well because we have more than a couple of steps to go I really hate that the camera is not picking up any progress. It's a bit tough for you guys to see because every time I'm trying to show you guys my hand is blocking the view. I'm trying to do as much as I can with my left hand so the cam my hand will not block the camera. I think this one is uh, a little bit better. Uh, I used uh, too much water on the, this one. But hey, even the Dutchman is human, believe it or not. Now 
this will be the last one. I'm using old brushes to chip like this. I'm not going to ruin my new brushes for it. For that would be a real shame. Just wipe off all excess water. Yeah, I think that's a way better. So you can see where I started. I started over here. This one was getting better, and this one is even getting better, better. Anyway, uh, the next step you do is uh, put on a varnish. To protect uh, whatever you just did so that is what I'm going to do now all right I'm just using a mild varnish just spray it on a little bit not too much no need for uh, spraying on two or three layers, it's just one layer to protect uh, what you just did. Then you let uh, the varnish dry and then it's on to the next step. Okay guys, now it's uh, time uh, to put on another layer of worn effects or hairspray, whatever you like. Just a small layer. Spray it on a little bit, and that's about almost enough. Well, that has to dry again. It's uh, this technique is uh, really time-consuming. Let me put out this thing for a while so I don't have to shout uh, so loud. Um, uh, this uh, baking uh, metal plates is uh, really time consuming, as uh, you will uh, know, because every step has to dry completely and there are a lot of steps to do. Um, well, uh, what I just did was uh, another coat of worn effects and the next step will be another uh, layer of dark grey. So I will do that in the next step. So it's time to clean out the airbrush again and waiting for this one to dry and then it's on to the next step and we're back so uh, the worn effects has dried up completely now and, and now it's time to add another layer of dark grey um, I am again using the dark rubber from Panzer Aces Vallejo uh, to put on top of this layer so that's what we are going to do now. Just completely cover up the pieces of the plate. Okay, that's about enough so this has to dry up again and when that's dry um, we are going to chip it again with a uh, with a wet uh, brush or a damp brush whatever you pleases so when this is dry I will see you again Okay guys, it's uh, time for uh, the second time of chipping. I applied the worn effects and on top of that I did uh, a dark rubber, a dark grey and let it dry. So I'm now going to chip it again. We'll see how it comes out this time the reason the reason 
Wow, my English is good. Uh, the reason that I'm chipping uh, it again so uh, is to get some layers um, on it. If you look uh, close at, uh, at raw metal, you will see it has all kind of uh, dents in it. Uh, raw metal is not smooth, if you like. So that's why I'm chipping it again. And you will get more variety in the middle, if you like. But you can use uh, just uh, one time of chipping if you like. But I'm not doing that. I'm using two layers of chipping. The brush is pretty wet. That's okay, not to worry. Second plate. I think I will have to speed up this video a little bit. Or maybe not, I don't know. If I feel like it, I will speed it up. If I think I bore you, uh, there it comes. It's not the way. Uh, like you chip your uh, vehicles. If you chip your vehicles you uh, would be really happy with uh, the big chips. This is uh, more... Um, uh, I don't know how to explain that but you have to see it for yourself I think. But if I would uh, chip my tank uh, like uh, like this, I would not be happy. I can tell you that. Chipping a tank is more subtle. And this is just raw metal that has been uh, put outside or just came from the factory. And it has a rusted layer on that metal. Now, if you can see, I'm working really fast, but that's because I do not want uh, this video to take very, very long. But if you do this, or you are going to try this, uh, just take your time. And it's really important to let it all dry completely. I did not, as I can tell you right now. But if you let all layers dry completely and you chip as it should be you will be okay now you can see over here that I took a, a little piece of paint off so you can see the plastic strip no panic no worry there's yet another layer 
to be applied. So I am. Um, this is a uh, no need for completely dry. So I am going to put a matte varnish over it. So I don't have to wait for that. I can do that straight away. I'm going to turn on the spraying booth again. There you go. So this uh, matte varnish is uh, applied now uh, to protect uh, what I just did. Um, this needs to dry again completely. Really important guys, let your layers completely dry. So uh, no rush. Uh, after that is dried I am going to um, apply some rust chips with uh, the sponge technique. So that will be shown uh, shortly. So I will see you uh, very soon. Hello and welcome again. Uh, the varnish is dried up now. So I'm uh, going to use uh, the sponge technique for uh, chipping some uh, different colors of rust on it. Um, I'm going to use three different colors. Color number one is uh, yellow ochre. It's uh, from uh, Vallejo Model Air. Color number two is uh, light rust. Ook, uh, it's also from uh, Vallejo Model Air. My Dutch is coming uh, <laughs> between my English. Oh, I'm terrible now. I'm really I'm terrible. Um, and color number three is orange rust, also from uh, Vallejo Model Air. Uh, let's begin with the light rust. Now the way that I'm going to do that is to apply a small dot of each color onto the, the plastic card. Now as I explained before if you are following me on Facebook or uh, my build uh, threads, I am a bit colorblind. And I mean by colorblind that uh, some colors that are close together I do not see. So for me it's also always really important to know what color is on the bottle and where that color is. So I'm going to start with the light rust and I know that the light rust is on the left side so I'm using a, a small dishwash sponge. I cut it in pieces. Uh, it was okay with my wife before anyone asks. So I'm putting it into the light rust in color number one and I'm going to uh, dip it off most excess paint onto a piece of a kitchen towel and I'm going to randomly applying the rust chips. I hope you can see it a little bit. I'm going to over to the other one. Oh. I find it very important that you uh, are applying it in uh, randomly order, so not always the same way, but just vary with applying the chips. For that will be more realistic. If I put on too much, I take the clean side of the sponge and just chip it over the excess. Like here, it's too much. Just press on the clean side of the sponge and then you will be okay. So, that's color number one. 
Now I'm taking off a little piece of the sponge where the previous color was. And I'm going to start with a almost clean other sponge. And I'm going to apply color number two on exactly the same way as I did color number one. This a bit too much, so I'll take it off again. And last but not least, the yellow ochre. Just a few specks of this color, otherwise you will end up with a Christmas tree. And it will not be realistic at all. So these are the rusted colors. Now the next thing I will do, uh, if I got it over here, yes here it is. I've got here some uh, pigment from Mick. Uh, it's uh, old rust. This is a pigment uh, I use uh, almost uh, always for uh, my chipping to add just a bit more rust for uh, for example uh, exhaust uh, you name it So I am using an old brush for that also this is my uh, old uh, rust brush, <laughs> if you like. I'm using it only for that purpose. So I'm putting on a little bit rust on that brush and I'm going to apply it mostly on the center, uh, not the center, on the, on the outside of the plates. But you can put it on almost everywhere where you like. But with this technique, uh, less is more. So don't overdo it. As I did in the beginning. Oh, let's rust that exhaust. Yay! Well, if my exhaust was rusted on my car like that. I would be taken off the taken off the highway, I can tell you. Because there was way too much. So here is just less is more. Right. Now as this is finished for so far. I'm going to let it dry again and then it's uh, time to um, do another step and that I will show you very shortly so I will see you soon. Okay guys here we are again and we are going to varnish all the plates again just to uh, protect and to seal uh, the how do you call it uh, the pigments so that's what I will do I'm turning on the spring booth again otherwise it's uh, getting really misty here there we go Right, so there we have it, the plates are uh, all varnished now, so we need to let that dry again, uh, maybe uh, a bit longer than uh, the first time I did, 
uh, after that uh, I'm going to apply some worn effects again or if you like hairspray uh, I never tried hairspray myself before I, uh, I like uh, the worn effects from uh, AK so uh, that I will do so I'm um, back really quick okay guys um, I what step were I? Um, I varnished the whole lot and um, I already applied uh, another layer of worn effects from uh, AK. Uh, this one. Or you can use uh, the hairspray as I said. Um, that all has been dried up right now. So I will uh, spare you uh, another run of uh, me spraying on uh, the worn effects. So we can uh, go uh, straight to uh, another step and that's applying a coat of gunmetal blue. At least that is what uh, I'm using. Together with the base color I already used is uh, dark rubber. Uh, so it's uh, one part of gunmetal blue and two parts or of uh, dark, uh, dark rubber. Uh, and of course some uh, th some thinner so it's uh, ready uh, to uh, receive his coat now so this is uh, just what the, we are going to do well, here we go just fully cover it And let it dry again completely before we are going uh, to uh, chip it again with a with a wet uh, brush. So when that's dry, I will be back for another chipping round. So I will see you guys. Okay, guys, the this layer is uh, also dried up again. Um, this blue gray layer. Um, I put on uh, a glove because uh, I have to uh, hold uh, it a little bit so it's getting a bit messy for I'm going to use uh, not a damp brush but a wet brush and I'm going to uh, do some chipping again or well chipping it's uh, more rubbing off the blue layer so that uh, some some of uh, the blue layer will uh, will be staying on but the, the original colors will come through the blue layer or something like that so i just i just begin and you will see it soon enough i hope if i did everything the correct way that is Now I have here, stay. I have here uh, a piece of kitchen towel, and the kitchen towel I'm using to uh, take off all excess water because uh, now I cannot see what I've done. Well, a little bit, but if I'm going to use a piece of towel just suck up the excess water you will see that the all previous work is uh, coming through the grew uh, the grew the blue gray color that I just applied so it's on to the next one I have to be honest, the, uh, these plates, metal plates, are, uh, are looking a bit different than the ones I made yesterday for my diorama, but those were made um, with, uh, with a lot of patience. And this tutorial is uh, just to show you the steps. But I'm 
not doing a really bad job I think or I hope Let's dip it off again. It is important not to take off all the blue, the grey blue uh, color you just did. For that, no need to do it. Because the grey blue uh, color is a matter of fact, uh, the brand new steel, like it would come out of uh, the factory. The colors we just uh, add are the rusted colors from uh, laying outside or if uh, metal is not used for a very long time. It's going to rust. Everybody knows that. If you do not treat metal, it's just going to rust by itself. Now I am working in a steel mill, and I'm working with these uh, these plates. So I know that you only have to look at it, and it rusts. Uh, in Dutch. We are calling this type of steel playbacker style. And if you are uh, translate that to English, uh, I do not know how do you <laughs> you call that. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, the best way to translate uh, playback style to a uh, toilet steel. It's a very cheap steel and it does not has the quality for not rusting. But I'm not going to bother you with some more work sayings. So, keep it on. I think this is about it. I think. Final step that I'm going to do now. I've got here uh, another pigment. It's a standard rust from uh, from Mick Jimenez. That I will apply a very light for the end result. Mostly concentrated on the corners. Not too much. Can rub it a little bit in with the kitchen towel and it will st stay on the plates because they are still a little bit wet. So this pigment will fix itself into the wet paint. Now the final step that I will do now is to uh, apply another uh, layer of uh, matte varnish and that will be the last step for this tutorial. Oh, here we go. Turning on the spraying booth. I'm also getting
empty, had enough. So, turning, turning off the spraying booth again, and uh, I think I've got all steps uh, right now. Um, if you like, you can uh, add some uh, scratches before you uh, apply the matte varnish. Um, you will need to do that uh, with a, a sharpened uh, toothpick and just uh, gently make some scratches into the into the uh, into the paint uh, and then you uh, apply your matte uh, matte varnish. Uh, I'm not going to do that uh, right now. Um, this one is finished for now. I'm going to let uh, this uh, dry and I can uh, show you uh, the end result, I hope, with some better light. And I will see you uh, in a moment. Okay guys, this will uh, complete uh, the tutorial about making uh, raw steel plates. Um, they are a little bit too dark for my liking, but I, uh, I hope I could uh, show you the way I make these metal plates. Uh, it's a long progress with uh, a lot of layers, uh, a lot of drying time between them, uh, but it's definitely worth it. And uh, you can use these plates for side armor on a tank or uh, stack them together and uh, put it in your diorama or uh, sky is the limit. Uh, it's really awesome uh, if you uh, if you can achieve uh, this uh, this result. Um, this camera uh, is a, a bit of a lousy camera so it does not pick up all uh, the nice colors that are uh, on these uh, plates so I'll have to make uh, a photo of it and I will edit it uh, into this uh, video. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, this, uh, this video and uh, I also hope I didn't bore you uh, to death uh, if so, don't PM me <laughs> for it, for because I know I can, uh, can be boring. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and if you have any questions or uh, whatever uh, to ask uh, me, uh, don't hesitate to ask, and uh, I will try to answer it. So thank you for your attention, and uh, hope to see you guys uh, next time. Thanks guys, bye bye.